In 1995, an article appeared in the Journal of Pre-Hospital and Disaster Medicine about the death of a five-year-old boy from Hanover, Germany. He fell through the ice of a frozen lake, and the rescuers who arrived on the scene were unable to resuscitate him. Too long the boy was in the icy water. To be exact, his heart was stopped for 88 minutes. Now imagine the faces of the doctors who saw the boy's heart beating in just 20 minutes after warming him up, and he was discharged two weeks later without any side effects or long-term health problems. Of course, this and other similar cases have attracted the attention of medical and astrophysicists alike. No matter what they say about asteroids and global warming, the main enemy of mankind is not them or even death, as strange as it may sound. The main enemy of mankind is time. It is time that leads us to death, giving us no hope of victory. It is time that prevents one person from conducting monumental research hundreds of years long. And as for space, it's even simpler here. It takes a long time to fly to the stars and planets, and therefore, physicists cling with all their might to the possibility, if not to stop, then at least somehow slow down time for future space colonizers. Hibernation, anabiosis, cryosleep, artificial coma, the most popular in mass culture are traditionally variants of cryosleep. You freeze, fall asleep, wake up 10,000 years later at Alpha Centauri, Convenient, isn't it? Yes, and the case of the boy from Hanover is not the only or even the most shocking in this direction. In 2018, a 53-year-old man was found frozen on the banks of the Orbe River in France. His heart hadn't beaten for a full 18 hours. And as in the case of a five-year-old boy, the man regained consciousness after being warmed, healed, and did not have any complications for further life. The medics, of course, cite cooling as the cause. The body temperature of the boy from the lake after being found by rescuers was 19.8 degrees. The man from France, 22 degrees. In their case, doctors say it was the low body temperature that was the key to the rescue. Not that it froze, but it slowed down all the processes going on inside the body. The brain did not require so much blood. The lungs could relax and use up the available supply of oxygen for a very, very long time. As a result, the organs are not damaged, and after warming up, the person feels great. The difference between anabiosis, cryosleep, and other techniques that slow down the processes inside the body seems to be insignificant. But in fact, it is important. In the case of the boy and the man, it's a natural kind of anabiosis. Natural, because the catalyst for the cooling was external factors. You can't just jump into a lake and wake up in the year 3000. Cool down too quickly, you can get stress edema. Too slowly, cause hypoxia and brain death. All in all, it's complicated, but not impossible. In 2005, a team of scientists at the University of Pittsburgh drained blood from a group of dogs, replaced it with saline, kept them dead for three hours, and then successfully resurrected them. In 2019, Samuel Tishman's instructions were used in a similar way to save a man for the first time. After a gunshot wound, the poor man would probably have died. But anabiosis bought time for doctors to perform a normal operation, and the patient survived. At the moment, the semblance of anabiosis is widely used in medicine. Body cooling is practiced on infants and on people whose injuries are too severe to treat under normal conditions. Thus, we already possess a semblance of anabiosis, but unfortunately, we are a long way from using it in space. All that modern medicine can do is a few hours, but not dozens of years which is required for astronauts. And modern research states that 90% of the matter is not in the current level of technology, but in the peculiarities of the human body. The theoretical maximum at the moment is considered to be three days, and 18 hours of men from France are considered a miracle. Therefore, in real research, not anabiosis, but hibernation enters the scene. It's a very similar concept, but there is still a difference. NASA and other agencies in their research under hibernation means a decrease in the temperature of astronauts' bodies, not to the extreme 20-25 degrees, but only from 36 to 32 degrees. 32 degrees is a temperature to which the body can in principle get used to and not fight back. But at the same time, the body will consume less resources. To be more precise, metabolism slows down by 75%. This is where the range of being in this state expands to three to four weeks. Still not a millennium, but already better. The first tests are planned to begin on pigs in the coming years. The original purpose of the current research is not to screen interstellar or to take care of pilots, 
The purpose of hibernation is to reduce the mass of the ship. By some estimates, sleeping for most of the flight would help reduce mass by 50%. They will need less food, water, and other resources and consequences of human activity. As a consequence, it is possible to launch a rocket not so powerful and use the extra kilograms, for example, to protect against radiation. After all, the second pitfall is that even during hibernation, anabiosis, and any similar processes, the aging of the human body continues. A person gains nothing from lowering the temperature and sinking into semi-sleep. Cells are still dividing the same way. The body wears out, and it is impossible to extend the lifespan, even a little bit through artificial sleep. A simple example of this is bears, crayfish, worms, and other animals that hibernate. They do not live for thousands of years, and evolutionarily, they need this process just to wait out unfavorable conditions outside. All modern developments on hibernation are developments for close space flights inside the solar system. In order to save mass and to provide ships with decent radiation protection, there is some good news. NASA calculations show that hibernation helps to cope with this very radiation. The fact is that when a living being is in such a state, its cells interact sluggishly with charged particles. And as a consequence, radiation does not cause damage. Also helps cooling with another trouble of space, muscle atrophy. Right now, the leader in development is contractor, NASA Spaceworks. Their main goal is to fly sedated astronauts to Mars. Mars Transfer Habitat is a project that calls for a vehicle to fly to Mars with people weighing just 20 tons. While the most promising classic concept, the Mars Design Reference Mission, calls for 42 tons. But according to workers at Spaceworks, their venture is unlikely to succeed, primarily because of bureaucracy. Getting permission to test drugs on humans is almost unrealistic, and permission to dive into a kind of coma from which it is unclear whether the person will get out or not, a hopeless venture. The head of Spaceworks, John Bradford, bluntly says that these days, even if you get all the permits, the project is likely to be rejected by NASA itself for fear of complaints from human rights organizations. Although, as John points out, there are hundreds of pilots among those willing to take part in the experiment. Human hibernation in general is possible, but it does not look like in the movies and is intended for very different purposes. And on the other hand, because of bureaucracy and overly emotional society, these goals are very difficult to fulfill. Well, we should forget about full-fledged freezing of people at all. Although some startups offer to freeze your bodies for the future, it's a 99.99% .99 chance of a one-way ticket. To see for yourself, just freeze a bottle of water. Everyone is aware that ice is 9% larger by volume than water. Now, imagine that the cracked bottle is the blood vessels in your brain. That's the end of the analogy, at least for the next couple hundred years, until more promising technologies become available.